Craig. I'm the principal of Mill Park Elementary and my pronouns are she, her. Hi, I'm Vanessa Crowley. I'm the assistant principal here at Mill Park and I use she, her pronouns. Hi, I'm Ariana Gonzalez. I'm a third grade teacher at Mill Park and I use she, her pronouns. Uh, hello, my name is Jafet and I'm in fourth grade and my pronouns are he and him. Hi, I'm Eden and um, I'm in fourth grade and uh, I go by they, them. Hello, my name is Dee Dee Bradley and I work at Mill Park and I go by she, her. So I want to start this conversation just hearing from our students. And so these two students are in the anti-bullying club and we've talked about racism at Mill Park. We've talked about bullying. We've talked about racial slurs. So um, I just want to hear from you two. Uh, first of all, what are some of the problems that we've talked about in the anti-bullying club and what are those, um, pro how are those problems related to race, do you think? Um, like some problems, uh, like Nick, like name calling, like, mm -hmm. um, like people calling people like monkey or like, like a lot of like kids use the N word in our class. And so, um, I'm pretty sure like that's racist and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and a lot of it is towards like, um, uh, like, like in a mean way and stuff like that. So like, uh, like someone like would say like the N word to like a white kid, like for like, to be mean and stuff like that. Uh, racism? Yeah, what do you, what, just talk about the anti-bullying club, like what are you noticing in school? Is it, like, is it racist comments or just a bullying or both or what? Uh, it's both that, because some people bully that, bully people because of their shoes, their clothes, their pants and their hairstyles and people say, when they're uh people say a lot of them words even when they're not black and uh they use other words that can be really offensive to other people right so can you talk about um whether you feel like you belong at mill at mill park you want to start no okay <laughs> uh what's it called um so like at sometimes like i know that i belong here and i know people want me here but like 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 when people are like making comments about how I dress and how like I act and stuff like that it makes me feel like I don't belong here. I like shouldn't be at the school because everybody's so different from me. But like mainly I feel that I do belong at the school and stuff like this. What is something that has helped to make you feel like you belong? Um, talking with like Miss Dee Dee and stuff like that, or like talking to like uh one of like one of like a uh, helpful teachers, like like Miss Team or Miss Gonzalez or Miss Dee Dee and stuff like that. I feel uh good at the school. I feel belong because everyone greets me in the mornings. They say uh good morning, Jafet. Almost everyone knows my name, and everyone in different classrooms greets me and. Uh, I have a good time at school. Sometimes I just feel like I don't want to go to school because sometimes I had bullies making fun of me and but now I just feel I belong in the school. Good. Well, I just want to say I really appreciate you two taking a leadership role and you've grown both quite a bit this year as far as being anti-bullies in the school and made some good progress. Um, yeah. So I wanted to move into a different direction and you can all kind of answer this um what how comfortable are you all at school talking about race um, and do you feel like that's a topic that we can talk about uh easily just like to open that up for everybody to talk about so for like i think for some kids it can be hard and easy but like, um, but like for other kids, it could be like the opposite and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, that's all. Why, I'm gonna pick your brain just a little bit. Okay. Why do you think that? Because um, I do, I agree with you. I mean, um, some kids could be like sensitive about that topic and stuff like that. And some others could be like super comfortable with, with it, like some open kids and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, that's all. Uh, do you think, because I like that you use the word like sensitive versus open. Yeah. Um, do you think that it could be coming from like a place where like it's unknown? Like they don't yeah, like, genuinely know what 
like um, racism is. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, like like some kids could like be like sens- like don't know or like sensitive about it or like just like don't understand it and that's like that's okay for like a lot of kids and stuff for like for like the like open kids and stuff like that like like I don't think they would be uncomfortable with it but like I'm sure like like even open kids could be like sensitive to that like issue and stuff like that. So what helps us be more open? What helps us get more kids and adults to that open place? And anybody can answer that. But I think it's crucial um, to like teach that um, there's like a, something um, going on in the education world when it comes to like social studies and curriculum and things like that. It's like um, teaching hard history. It's what they're calling it. And so you, in order to fully understand race racism, how it plays in the United States, you have to understand history mm-hmm. um, and oh, history okay. from everywhere. Like, you have to, like and I feel like that's also lost. We don't really have a social studies um, curriculum mm-hmm. or one that really ties that in. So it's like, you have to listen to like those lost or unheard voices. They're silent, right? We don't know their stories. And so when we do have to teach, like I know I found this recently with um, our new curriculum, we had to do a module where we we're talking about the constitution um, you know, the, the founding fathers, things like that. And so like, I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, okay. Um, cause I love teaching history. Uh, and so I was like, well, hold on. I had to think, okay, I'm going to teach this, but then I'm also, I want to make sure that I'm also addressing that these, all these other things were also happening. Um, how come we didn't hear about them? Like whose voices were silent during this time period mm-hmm. and kind of connecting those pieces. And then that's when you're able to really get a great discussion and you get to ask that, like that critical thinking question, like, why is it important to teach hard history? It could make you sad. It could make you um, sad, but like also really interested. Um, and that's normal. And I think also um, focusing on that too, like your feelings, like right? Regulation, like, okay, if it's too hard, let me know. Like there's just a lot of, a lot of different aspects. Uh, but I think going back to the original question is like, we have to be able to teach. We have to be able to teach history or teaching the main really difficult parts in order to get a really clear base understanding. I think a lot of it is definitely history because people don't know what they don't know. So if we're not teaching it, then so I I just go back to the question that you guys asked. Well, how do you do people know that they're being, you know, racist? Like literally, I believe that a lot of people really don't know because they they just they weren't taught it. So I'm going to agree with you on that. Like you have to teach it. You know, that, that I'm big on ask me a question. I would rather you know it the right way rather than not know it at all. Ninja Fat, do you feel like anybody has taught you things that are racist or um, yeah. Yeah, here yeah. at school? Uh, yeah. uh, I know like like not to like be like racist and stuff like that around those kind like those like races because it's rude and disrespectful and like i've been taught about it and i know it's like bad like it can like get you in a lot of trouble and stuff like that has the topic of racism come up in your class you know we talked about some name calling and does that come up and how is it addressed at our school and how do you actually feel like me and miss crowley and our our school addresses racism uh our teacher like talks about it and like makes sure that like we know like so like a teacher would say that it's like not okay to say that and we can't say that anymore because that is not okay to say and stuff like that. You talked about hearing um, name calling and racist comments before. Have, how has an adult helped to stop that or how have you and your friends helped to stop that when it happens? Uh, break it apart and talk to the other person and talk to the other person and uh, tell the teacher about it and then maybe they don't know how to solve it and I think people don't know they're being racist because they never taught they, no one ever taught them how to not be racist mm-hmm. so they don't know what racist is and ra- what is racist yeah that goes back it goes back to the the History. teaching of it, yeah. you know, you don't, mm-hmm. you, if you don't know, you don't know. I, I feel like a broken record when I'm saying that, but it's literally one of those things where you have a conversation with a kid and they look at you like, oh, is that, is that racist, Miss Dee? I'm like, yes, yeah, sweetie, that's racist. You can't say that. And then I explain like mm-hmm. why they can't say that. And every once in a while I'll throw in a bit of history, like 
this is why you shouldn't say that. And then they think like, oh, never gonna say that again, did Miss CDM. Oh, thank you. So it, it, a lot of times it's a teachable moment, you know, so you have to look at it in that lens. Well, and you two talked before in our anti-bullying club about the fact that consequences don't work so well, like yeah. walking tickets it's and referrals and all this parent con. Like if you say something racist, then you instantly are in trouble. Dee Dee's kind of saying the opposite, like that's a teachable moment. You're saying the same thing. Can you explain why punishments don't seem to work for racism? You brought that up before. Uh, Cause they feel like don't, they don't care. They can just do anything because they're different colors. And if someone like says that they think that's racist and yeah. But my question is, do like walking tickets work? No, like you said don't. no, so why? Like Because they could just do it all over again. And if they keep on getting walking tickets, walking tickets they could just they just lie about the walking tickets just, just, they don't do the walking tickets they never do it can i say something okay so um i want to add on to like what jeffet was saying like um the consequences that teachers give are give the students and like all our classmates and stuff it like like makes them like think about it and um, they just do it all over again because like i think it's like the, like i've said this before in the bullying club or not <laughs> sorry the anti-bullying club oh my god the anti-bullying club um like like i'm pretty sure they're just trying to like impress the people that they hang out with mm -hmm. um and stuff like that i i want to kind of jump in because when you were talking i was picturing like my class yeah. <laughs> um, and something that's really worked and like I was thinking culture and I know next year we're really going to be focusing on the culture of Mill Park mm -hmm. and um, tying in a lot of equity related things goes into that and I know from day one when I first got my class like I knew okay I'm an equity based teacher I'm an anti-racist educator um, I want to make sure that my classroom we have a culture within each other or within that within our little area um where it's going to be respectful but we're also very aware of each other's races and ethnicities what we bring to the classroom what we bring to the table and we're going to have these hard conversations like if i have to stop what i'm teaching if i have to stop content for today math reading small groups whatever to talk about this i'm going to do it um and I, i've done that since day one and it's really it it helps and i think sometimes like i do have students who are like you know, either like the popular kid, I was also that student, um, but it's like, you can be popular and um, try to impress people or whatever, other students, but you can also be respectful with yeah. other people's Culture differences, cultures, yeah, like, ethnicities. You can still be, sorry, I didn't- No, you're, yeah. Okay, okay. You so like, you can still be like popular or whatever, and like be like a cool kid and still be nice and respectful right. and instead of like being like, hey, your shoes are ugly and try to impress like a different kind of like person that's a right. cool kid. Right, and I think that just ties back to culture in itself. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't have that culture already built in, if you don't have that same line of respect against each for each other, um, that's where that comes into play. Like I know I find sometimes, yes, my students will, you know, get a little worked up, but then right immediately I have maybe a handful of students, five of them, oh, that was that was not okay, that or that was racist. Maybe what you did say was racist. Um, and they, they call them out quickly, and then they also tell them like, this is why that's not cool, dude. This was not okay, like, da -da -da. they'll do it first, and then they'll come and tell me. And then we have a whole class discussion. I'm sorry, we're in a circle. And I said, pause. Um, and so I, I will say, no, I'm serious, I'm like, right? It's like, pause. <laughs> Um, cause that, that's not okay. And that's, that's not what our classroom community is. And I think like emphasizing that moving forward too, would be really helpful. That's not like what the school is like. The school Mill Park isn't like, uh, like it shouldn't be for like, like for like racist talk and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just supposed to be like a temple of learning instead of like, like, I don't want to come to school today because people are going to make fun of how like my skin tone mm -hmm. and stuff because mm -hmm. like, but that's not what Mill Park is. It should be like, like it should be, hey, I want to go to school today because like I can learn and I can also hang out with my friends and I don't have to go because people are telling me that I look like ugly because of my skin. And that's like what's happening. People are not wanting to come to school because of people are making fun of their skin or how they dress or just like, like, like they're just trying to make fun of anything that they can to be like cool and popular. Right. So it's 
Mrs. Craig's and my job to make sure that our school culture and our Mill Park School is a safe and welcoming place where kids want to be kind to each other and don't want to insult each other and bring each other down. So from a student perspective, what are things that work for you guys? How do you build relationships with your classmates? How do you have community with them? What are things that work to support a positive school culture? Or what would you like to see? Yes, that too. What, what do you like, want yeah, to what see? Do you, what would you like to see? I mean, we're asking you all these questions like this, that, like what would you, you know, on to the next chapter, let's say you're in your next grade class. What is it that you want to see in your class that's going to help you build community, build friends, keep from being bullied, that kind of thing? What do you want to see? Um, you want to know? I want to see that everybody is not like everybody has like an enemy, right? But I don't want no one has an enemy because they get in a lot of fights. Like sometimes outside there's like one or two fights outside and uh, I just want everyone to be like a community because that's what the school are supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I just want them to be a community to stop the fights, uh, to actually learn because people are just messing around throwing things yeah and it's like hard to learn in my yeah. class because so many people are messing around and not trying to learn and it's like 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 it's like it's like mainly two kids it could be like two kids or like three mm -hmm. in our class and then they're stopping the rest of the class from from learning and it's like upsetting because we come to school to learn and not to like mess around mm -hmm. uh what's it called do you, do you still want to go Okay, so what was the question again? <laughs> no, you answered it. You answered it. You, oh, you okay. answered it. Yeah. You mentioned teaching history and having that integral. You mentioned the teachable moments, but how do we change? Like there are problems and then there's bright spots. How do we change? Like if you, what are your suggestions? What direction do we need to go to make not just kids feel welcome, but like teachers and teachers of color and to make this an environment where everybody is seen and belong, everybody belongs? What? What are our next steps? I The one thing that I do absolutely love about Mill Park is that we, our school keeps a growth mindset. Like we're always ready to figure out what we can do next to help somebody learn. Granted, you're going to have, you're going to always have a few that are not quite with it. But for the most part, I think that that's one of the things I like about Mill Park because I have people who I work with who are on board to change, you know, equity, inclusion. I tell people all the time, like, Mill Park is my home. Like, I've sent, I don't know how many nasty emails about being here at Mill Park. It's just, it's the community, the environment, the kids, and I wouldn't change it for the world. But the to get back to the question, it's just the wanting to know more you know mm -hmm. what i mean bringing people in together the teachable moments mm -hmm. asking questions no fear of like what somebody's gonna say mm -hmm. about whatever question that you might want to ask so mm -hmm. i appreciate that um i was gonna say like for growth <laughs> well, um and we talked about this on the equity team but i think i feel no more baby steps um mm -hmm. when it comes to our equity pds like go. We need to just straight shoot it. Um, and I know we've talked about this since day one, um, like a couple years back, but I think it starts, if, if we're not moving and keeping up with the pace of the students, mm -hmm. we're slipping behind. And so we're getting into this issue now and we're like, oh my God, like, okay, how do we, how do, we do this? And how, well, I don't know, it just, it comes at you so fast because we're a couple steps behind them. We have social media it's getting crazy and everything's being learned from there. And so like we have to get our heads together as a co as a collective. We talk about equity work is a collective um, thing. It's not an individual thing. It's not an individual individualized system. We have to work together and really get our heads mm -hmm. in one space. We're doing learning together and we are with our PGs, but I think we've been baby stepping. Um, and like I know some of the staff, they're ready to like do more. And that was very evident at our last PD. Um, and from the feedback that we've gotten, but I definitely think it's time for us mm -hmm. to like dive deeper than we've been doing. It's just toes have been in the water, but we need to get at least up, you know, waist <laughs> yeah. deep. Um, yeah. And that that's just my thought. And I know, 
I know I have to go get my children. <laughs> but, like, um, I can't wait for our staff to watch this video because I'm really inspired by these two, honestly. And we talk a lot about these hard conversations being really scary and we get stuck in our fear. And like Miss Didi said, we have really great relationships amongst our teachers here and with students. And we don't want to ruin that. We don't want to lose those relationships. And so we're afraid to say that was racist because we don't want to lose that relationship and have those hard conversations. And what I know about you two is you joined this anti-bullying club. Like, what is this? Oh, you want me to talk about when I've been a bully and when I've been bullied? You want me to be vulnerable? Okay. And you dove right in. And I mean, you're here doing this video with us now. Like your bravery is really inspirational. And I think that we as a staff can mm -hmm. learn a lot from you guys about how we just have to take this step and right. get it done right. in order to make Mill Park the anti-racist place that we want it to be. Sitting in that discomfort, speaking your truth and being here and showing up even if you're scared and kissing, right? But yeah. it shows and it's projected. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. so proud of you. Yeah, that's yes. one of the things we talk about in our meetings, speaking your truth, telling mm -hmm. people how you feel, what your experience is, because nobody's gonna know that if you keep it sheltered, right? So the whole point of it is to tell people what you're experiencing so that we can better help you. That's what all this work is about. Yeah. I wish, I know that we do it as staff, but I wish every once in a while we could push a few kids in mm -hmm. so they can see what we're working on. That way they know it's not just hearsay or, you know, maybe it's happening. Mm -hmm. They're right in it with their feet deep with us too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I really, I wish that we could do something like that too. All right, thank you everybody for your bravery and appreciate it. We believe in equity.